Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Meryl. It really is a pleasure to be here and for your audience today. I'm excited. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about you and how you got into what you do. Yes, absolutely. This is something that's been in me pretty much my entire life is to be able to help people to feel like they belong here, that to feel empowered and to really embody who they came here to be and do what they came here to do. And I mean, it sounds really young, but it was at the age of 10, I was already observing the world and seeing where that does and doesn't happen. And you mentioned about the book, that's where it was seated. When I started taking notes and thinking about how and when society determines your destiny and wanting to transform that in some way. So through my own personal growth, professional growth, and all the different life experiences I had and exposure to many different walks of life and ways of being and traveling the world and learning through different cultures as well, how we can do that, how we can be able to move through the things and people and places that hold us back and empower us. So for over 25 years, I was working with people in transitional spaces, helping them to feel seen and supported and guiding them with the steps that they needed to really embody their truth, really step into their passion. Because the way I see passion, when you break up the word, it's pass I on. And that I is your soul's expression of who you really are. And to really embody that so you can pass that on in this lifetime. And I so it's that. always been my path to do that. <laughs> so I yeah. love that. Pass I on. I'm writing that down. Mm, thank you. And that's why soul care is so important because through my belief system, we are spiritual beings having this human experience. And so it only makes sense to focus on keeping our spirit intact, right? And engaging in soul care, what nourishes us, what heals us, no matter what form our life has taken, no matter what kind of work we're doing. We're still who we are in the expression of any of that. And some areas of life or some work roles, parenting roles, allow an expansive way to express ourselves and some really constrict them. And then the cost of not tending to our soul care can be quite alarming and really take us off on a whole different trajectory for our life, right? When we start when we start reacting to life rather than embodying it, then we start to disrupt all of our natural rhythms, right? Mental and cognitive blockages start to occur. We start experiencing things that feel unsettling, that dysregulate or dispirit us, dysregulate our nervous system and dispirit us in helping us, well, not helping us, but causing us mm -hmm. to feel either frazzled, overwhelmed, or even numb feeling disconnected, you know, and then the regret and the resentment starts to build and we kind of lose our capacity to be able to experience joy and fulfillment and deep, vital life satisfaction. And so, of course, physical ailments come. I mean, that's where the dis-ease comes from. So that's why I think it's so important to share this message about soul care. Because when I was working in social services, for example, for a number of years, working in domestic violence with federal offenders, poverty, immigration, refugees, and addiction, a lot of mental health. Um, I noticed a lot of my coworkers were on medical leave. There were work injuries. There's a lot of mental health issues even within the coworkers, right? Because anxiety and depression would set in, the feeling of helplessness, of not being able to work within the system. And we would engage in self-care. Actually, the, uh, the corporation I worked for at the time had ergonomics, you know, so our bodies can handle the stresses of the job. And we would have some personal development, things like that, and, and discounts on gym memberships, for example. But none of that was ever really enough. Yeah. Self-care really focuses on a self-perpetuating pattern of eating well, sleeping well, you know, just kind of regulating in meeting our physiological needs, which right. are deficiency needs. So it's as if we're never enough. Mm -hmm. We always have to do more or do better, right? And that, again, supports, you know, a really dysfunctional, dispiriting way of life. 
to integrate a higher consciousness model of living, which we're all moving more and more into now, which is very exciting, yeah, <laughs> even though it may not absolutely. see that, but the chaos is creating mm -hmm. an opportunity for that. Right. We're starting to settle in more into those growth needs, right? When you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the growth needs are really beyond the self-esteem, the physiological, the belonging. It's more now about growing so the aesthetic needs so what kind of environments we surround ourselves with our support networks we have the self-actualization the transcendence experiencing beauty and joy all of those things that help us to expand and grow and evolve and transform so moving beyond our normal ways of being into something that's more rich and more fulfilling yeah. and Thank you for having me for the opportunity to speak on that. Yeah, no, it's, that's very beautiful the way that you, um, yeah, just eloquently shared that. Mm, thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I can totally relate to that. I mean, and that that's what I'm aspiring. And I totally understand that. Like, I mean, I remember years ago when I had my nail salon, I was working myself to the bone, lots of repetitive motion, sitting all day long. And then I would go to the gym and, you know, slam on the step, you know, the step machine or the, you know, in the spin class, like everything yes. is so like, right. You got to get there, rush, do it hard work and, and everything. And then it took years, years for me to unwind yes. all of that to end up figuring out what was best for me. Mm -hmm. Right, and not follow the social norms and stuff, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And as we said, embodying life rather than reacting to it, right? And unwinding, absolutely, because we get so wound up by all of that, don't we? Or we yeah. get stuck in this dense fog, which another acronym, fear, mm -hmm. obligation, and guilt. It clouds our vision for our life and what what is meant for us, right? So, <laughs> <You're nuggets. laughs> yes. well, I need to clear that away. So Meryl, there's sure. actually at least five things that I can bring forth as a way of starting to engage in soul care. Hold on one second. Yeah, sure. fear, Obligation right. and guilt. Right. Mm, a fog, yes, a dense fog, making us feel heavy and yeah, all of the things. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so share with us your... Um, yes, you know. the way to feel inspired and empowered yeah. again is, is engaging in the soul care. Yeah, and you know what? I love acronyms. So there's even one for soul, which is sending out universal love. Mm. Right, and really that's what we're here for is to share our love in some way, which love... Another acronym is lots of vital energy. So really coming from that energized vital space, which is life, which is joy, which is our soul's desire, right? So the first thing, do what lights you up. What's mm -hmm. going to lighten you up, right? When you start engaging in the things you love, you start changing your state. You start changing how you're feeling, where you're moving in that space, right? You're not feeling so wound up and protected and guarded or closed in or tense right or depressed and heavy and resisting life or anxious where you just don't know where you're gonna go right just feeling frazzled and overwhelmed doing what lights you up puts you in a whole different space and being in that vibration really attracts more of the things that you feel grateful for that you can appreciate that you value and that you love so you start living your values so doing the things that do light you up that make you feel light or like ah oh, or I hear myself say to myself sometimes I am so happy right now <laughs> and I take note and notice what is it that I'm doing or thinking or feeling that's giving rise to that happiness that joy that contentment so even if you're kind of way off track <laughs> in the moment or just feeling really stuck and maybe write down five things that you love to do and just see what comes not even really thinking about it and don't do this on a computer, actually do it on pen and paper or color if you want to, just to kind right. of unwind a little bit that way. Because you work from a different side of your brain when you're writing to them when you're typing, actually, and having that screen interference. So try to write down five things that you really love to do or that you have done in the past that, you know, that you really enjoy that maybe you're not doing right now. Because even just thinking about it puts you back into that space, right? 
just the way it works in the opposite. If we're thinking something that was really unpleasant, we're back in that space, right? Yeah. And so doing think, what um, you love, writing those yeah. things down. I think a, a lot of the women that I talk to, um, they're still kind of lost. Yes. You know, and they're not really feeling like they have the worth to mm-hmm. do what they, you know, de- like they don't think they deserve to, yes. uh, you know, really do something fun for them. So that's soul enriching, right. For themselves. Yes. Um, and, um, and, and then some of them, you know, feel like they, they don't have the time. Right. Exactly. It's over giving and people pleasing so much. Mm-hmm. They're so depleted, right. They can't even see through the fog. Exactly. Exactly. And that's how society determines our destiny, right? We get caught up in those self-defeating beliefs, but we also have the power to change our mindset. And so I'll just give you a little analogy here. Like if you're driving and you get stuck in the mud or the snow, depending on what your weather is, but you're stuck, right? Or even being stuck in traffic, you can't go anywhere. Or if you start spinning your wheels, literally, if you're trying to get out unstuck from the mud or unstuck from the snow, You're just digging yourself into a deeper hole. And the same thing happens to us cognitively and mentally. Like Mm -hmm. I was saying, those are the costs of not tending to our soul care. We get stuck. We have to create those mental and cognitive blockages where we can't think about anything different because it's become such a habitual pattern for perfectionism, for pleasing others, for meeting others' expectations. And so what do we do? Do we keep, you know, accelerating (laughs) and just digging ourselves deeper? Or do we step back, step away, remove ourselves from the situation for a little while, gain some perspective, do something different, rise above it, go beyond it. And even just having the willingness at first, I am willing to move beyond this. I am willing to rise above the mundane aspects of my life. I am willing to love myself more. Even just starting there is a really great place to start. Just start where you are. Yes. Yeah. And so the second thing is to allow creativity. You know, we get so driven, especially women nowadays, because we've made our way into the business world and the political world. And, you know, we're showing up in more leadership roles and so on that we've really delved more into that masculine energy of performance and productivity and kind of lost the art of intuition Mm -hmm. right and our feminine caregiving modes which we need to start applying back to ourselves right because it's us that's doing all of the things it's us that are in those roles whether it's parenting business career entrepreneurial ventures it's all us right so Keeping our spirit intact means, you know, bringing back the joy, allowing the creativity to flow again. So getting back in to our right brain where we can create a meal, where we can create a new project, where we can create art, where we can dance it out. You know, dancing is one of my favorite things to do when I'm feeling really stuck and unwind. And you too? Yes, yes. Yeah, and just allowing that creativity to flow, even if it just means, again, putting that pen on paper or marker or crayon, just drawing or there's adult coloring books now, like Mm -hmm. just allowing that creativity to flow. Our creative force is our connection to spirit, which is the third thing. It's conscious connection to your higher power or your higher self, whatever that means for you, remembering that it's not society (laughs) that determines your destiny. It's the earth, it's the cosmos, it's your higher power, it's you actually, (laughs) all of it being interconnected, that's creating your life and your reality. And you do have the power to do that. It's just embracing your power for that change and that transformation. So creating that conscious connection, sitting with your higher self, connecting with your heart, connecting with the God of your understanding, connecting with spiritual beings, whatever it means for you. But that inner and outer authority being of a higher vibration, right? So that you can gain perspective. And another thing that's important too is being able to regulate our emotions and our nervous system. 
So mm -hmm. for introverts, myself is a big time introvert, believe it or not, even though I can be seem outwardly sociable. But what it means energetically is that we self-generate. We need downtime to regenerate our energy and replenish our energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So regulating our nervous system is really important for an introvert. For an extrovert, it's a little different. They thrive on social connection. Right. So that's really important to regulate their nervous system, to regulate their emotions is having quality relationships, engaging in deep, meaningful yeah, engaged conversation. I'm, yeah. And I'm both. Yeah. Right. I'm, I, yes. I would say I'm an extroverted introvert. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I really, I really need both. Yes. And we all do. We all yeah. do need some downtime and solitude and that deep belonging and social connection, mm -hmm. but knowing what really nourishes you, what your soul truly desires, that's what you can engage in, whether it be that downtime and time in nature and with animals for an introvert or the deep social connection and meaningful conversation or just having fun as an extrovert, yeah. but making sure, yeah, of course we balance and we weave between the two. So those are really important. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> aligning with your higher power, being able to do what lights you up, being able to regulate, and then also to be able to create sacred space. Mm -hmm. So having your environment, creating your sanctuary, in other words, a place that you can go for refuge or retreat or sanctuary, whether it's in a book, whether it's in a nourishing meal, whether it's in a cup of tea or coffee, whether it's out in nature in the forest for me or the mountains or the ocean, know what it is for you or a little quiet spot in your room in the corner you know if you have a loud crazy house <laughs> look for a place where you can just sit for a moment even if it means in the bathroom or you can close the door or in the shower I mean, <laughs> take that moment right yeah. take that moment and just rest there for a moment and just allow yourself to settle literally settle from your head into your heart into your feet and just ground for a moment just sigh <sighs> giving yourself room to breathe. So creating that sacred space is the fifth thing. It's very important. So those are some ways you can start engaging in soul care. And I actually have a soul care guide for your audience. Um, Earl, I think you'll put the link in there for everyone. And it's, and it's a guide to more of this, right? Understanding what soul care is, how it differs from self-care, how to bring both into your life and really find solace in your everyday life, not just on the weekend or at the end of the day or in your morning routine, which is also vital for setting the tone of your day, yeah. but how to find it every day and just keep feeding those seeds, keep you know cultivating that so they can increase your capacity to hold it all. Yes. No, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, who is your ideal client? My ideal client are aspiring transformational leaders and healers and change makers. Yes. And also the ones that are there, but are just frustrated <laughs> and kind of feeling stuck that they're not getting their message across. And so, yeah, they're the thought leaders. They're the healers. They're the light workers that are here to really help uplift humanity to wake up and change the world, which is the name of my podcast and the summit that's coming up in the new year, because that's what we're here to do to help, as Ram Das says, walk each other home, um, know. you know, to, yes, <laughs> to be able to do that and fulfill our life mission, right? Do who, become who we came here to be and do what we came here to do to make the impossible possible, right? Anything that's really just a mind shift. So shifting our mindset and engaging in that personal and spiritual growth because that's who we are. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for being here.